Hello and welcome to the Beauty Know It All. I have a very, very special guest here today. I'm here with Elizabeth Hurley at Estee Lauder's HQ and we are here to celebrate and to champion the fact that it's been 25 years of breast cancer awareness. And I'm not sure if any of you will know this, you should know this, that it was all started by an incredible woman called Evelyn Lauder. And Elizabeth is carrying on championing that cause. She's been the face and ambassador of BCRF for 22 years now. I can't believe that's gone so quickly. It has gone quickly. And you know, um, when we stand today, 25 years on in the campaign, it's just unbelievable what strides have been made. Do you, I hope you feel women. personally proud. Well, I'm a very small cog in the wheel, but I think that the breast cancer campaign has achieved so much. It's, it's achieved what it's set out to do. Because right at the beginning, Evelyn Lauder said, women are dying all over the world breast cancer and no one is talking about from it. From silence. Absolutely. No one is talking and you know I know from personal experience with my grandmother that that was very true. No one was talking about it. When my grandmother found her lump she didn't tell anyone including her doctor for over a year and even when she was diagnosed she still didn't talk about it. Even when she received treatment she didn't talk about it. I couldn't tell you now what treatment she had apart from a double mastectomy because she didn't talk about it. She felt uncomfortable and embarrassed. It was breasts, they were taboo. It was uncomfortable making for everybody, or so she thought, and we didn't talk about it. And when Evelyn decided, not long after she was diagnosed and treated herself, that she was going to start this campaign, I think it was a tiny thought that grew into a, a life-changing, world-empowering movement. The simple act of a pink ribbon sounds so simple and yet so powerful. How many have we given out now over the years? And I say we because I actually feel like I've been on counter giving them out too. Well, the Estee Lauder companies have handed out more than 150 million. Which is incredible. Free pink ribbons since we started it. And how much money? So yeah, I think it's important to say here that the Estee Lauder companies all, range, all uh, raise money for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, which is the BCRF. And we know the beauty industry in general raises funds and awareness, but Evelyn started this. How much money have we, you, actually raised? Well, the Breast Cancer Campaign have raised $70 million. That's incredible. When we raised money for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation, both were started by Evelyn Lauder 25 years ago. The Breast Cancer Research Foundation has raised more than $750 million for research. It's an A-star rated charity more than 90 cents in the dollar goes straight to researchers. It has very, very low admin costs. Well, last night you lit up the American ambassador to London's beautiful house, Pink. And then you actually pointed out two researchers at the back who were sort of hidden away. Who are the real unsung heroes of this? They're unbelievable. There were two researchers there last night, Mitch Dowsett and Dame Leslie. They are phenomenal people. You know, the Breast Cancer Research Foundation's researchers, they've been, they've been part of every major breakthrough in breast cancer in the last 25 years. They've made great strides. Well, we were saying just before we started filming, because obviously I've written that breast cancer awareness feature every year for 18 years now, and although scarily more women than ever are being diagnosed with breast cancer, and it will affect one in eight women, more women are surviving than ever before, and that's entirely down to that research done by people like that. It's down to research and it's down to awareness, yes. because through the awareness campaign, we've been helping to open the conversation and talk to women about checking their own breasts, about going to their doctor if they're worried, about having regular mammograms when they're of the right age. And this has meant that if there is a tumour, it's been found earlier than it would have been previously with people like my grandmother, who were scared and frightened and didn't tell anyone. So, um, and the earlier you find something and detect it, the, the options for treatment and survival are so, so much, much better. greater. We, yes. we know now that there's a 90% chance of survival if a tumour is found early. Oh. We know that mortality rates on breast cancer have decreased by 38% since the late 80s, which is a phenomenal That's such an achievement. achievement. It really, really is. And we all know people that have been directly touched and affected Everyone. by this disease. And I have so many friends in the industry from the ages of sort of 28 up until 78 have been affected by this disease and I do feel that by somebody and I know I know this is going to sound incredibly sycophantic but I have seen you speak at so many venues I've seen you put so many incredible landscape buildings in the UK and around the world pink but I think by having somebody like you it sort of lifts that that veil of secrecy because you're 
you're an intelligent, articulate, glamorous woman, but also you're a woman in the public eye, and that's incredibly important to have that conversation and to say that there is no shame, there's no secrecy. This is something we all need to own and embody, really, isn't it? I think so. I think so, yes, because, you know, it's in our private parts, mm -hmm. and um, the conversation is open in the West. It's still a little different. When we go to some countries, we have different cultures, um, in more developing countries, it's still a little harder to talk about breast cancer. Um, and we're hoping that in the you know forthcoming years, we can open that conversation more in these places, because women need to know about breast cancer. They need to know they need to check their own breasts, and they need to have doctors open to listen to them. Um, now, obviously, you've now turned the age where you have mammograms, as have I. Were you, when you got that first letter through to have a mammogram, how did it affect you? Because I remember when I got it, even though I've written the features, I thought, gosh, am I ready for this? Am I ready for that journey? Does that seem like I'm in denial? No, it, it's, no, of course not. I, Evelyn Lord gave me my first mammogram for my 40th birthday, and I had it in America, and she made me promise to have regular mammograms after that. Um, and I was nervous because I'd heard a few scaremongery things. I know, about you do, don't you? And in fact, that's rubbish. I know. They're not painful. It's uncomfortable for a few minutes and then it's over. Of course you're nervous to hear the result. Mm -hmm. But I was always, and have been comforted by the fact that because I have them regularly, because I check my own breasts regularly, I know that if they find something, it will only have just got there. It's about engaging that intelligent part of your brain saying you're doing the right thing and overcoming that little voice inside that says, what if they find something? And I do think that that, that knowledge that if they find something and they catch it early... They'll cure it. They'll cure it. There's a 90% chance. Which is what it. has happened with every single one of my friends that's had breast cancer because they're in our industry and they're empowered by people like you and I think that's really important. That has been the educational message and I think that has sunk home in most cases. Not that we're going to stop saying it. No. No, just because we've managed to get that message across in the States and in the UK and in parts of Europe, there is the rest of the world. Of course. Yeah. Um, now, talk me through what you've been doing in the past week, because I follow you on Instagram stories. It seems to me you've been on every single Delta plane, being <laughs> the most glamorous person handing out pink ribbons. You've been on every single daytime TV chat show. We've done a lot. We always do a lot in October, because this is our 25th anniversary. We've done even more. We have a great relationship with Delta Airlines, who've been... Um, big fundraisers for the Breast Cancer Research Foundation for years. And so this year, we, I did three flights with Delta where um, I did lurk and hide before all the passengers had boarded. And then I did leap up on the PA system, told them about breast cancer, told them about the campaign. Then I went up and down the plane, giving out pink ribbons and talking to people. And it, you know, it was an amazing thing because wherever I go when I talk about breast cancer, some women will always come up to me and say they're survivors, mm -hmm. which they did on these flights. Quite a few women on these flights told me they were undergoing treatment right then and there. One woman was going to visit her sister-in-law, who had had a mastectomy the day before in Los Angeles. It's quite, once you start the conversation, people have something to say and they like to share. And I think we've learned so much by letting people speak and letting people hear what they can learn from people who've been through this experience. Um, we've done a lot of work with families of people who've gone through breast cancer, and they've all said that once the conversation has started, it's helped the, the person they love, who's going through treatment so much more to hear from other women who've been through this. And they're, they're a sisterhood. They talk, they share experiences, which we haven't had if we haven't had breast cancer and they found it unbelievably useful. So all these channels that have opened up in the last 25 years are good channels. I can't believe it's been 25 years. That's as long as I've been in the industry, so I don't remember a time when the pink ribbon didn't exist. But I think your grandmother would be incredibly proud of you. She'd be very proud. Um, she would be, wouldn't she? She would be. And I think Evelyn too, because I yeah. do think you've, in your own way, carried on her legacy, and that's incredibly empowering for people. Yeah. Now, obviously, all of my followers are going to, going to know what they can do, as well as having an honest and open discussion and wearing your pink ribbon with pride. Obviously, yes, they'd order companies, create these amazing products, and so much of the money goes towards the research. I've got two products down here. Do you want to talk with you now? I, I do. Thought, I thought we were going to talk about the incredible box you will have seen all across Instagram, but sadly, it's sold out. But we've got <laughs> that's a good one in your hand. I know, let's this walk one. it through. Well, I this one's this. called Knockout Eyes, the, knock, the pink ribbon knockout eye collection. It's a, it's a fabulous collection. I wonder if I can open the box. Well, if you, if you can't tell you what's in it's it. It's pristine, but we'll take some nice close-up photographs so you can well, see. Well, it's fantastic. And if you buy this, 
100% of the retail price goes to the breast cancer research, research foundation. foundation. End of a long day. Um, so this is a fabulous. It's the end thing of a to long buy. two weeks. Let's it, be it has with. eyeshadows. It has an eye pencil. It has mascara. It's a beauty. And also, can we talk about? You are my favourite serum. This Advanced is Night Repair. Advanced <laughs> Night Repair. You know, I was given my first bottle of this when I started working for the company in 19. This is fantastic. I've used it twice a day for 22 years. This is a special edition that we've made as part of the Pink Ribbon Collection. It's pink. Oh, how cool! It's a beauty. And we give 20% of the retail price of this straight to the Breast Cancer Research Foundation. So you buy something that's great for you and you do a good deed too. You buy the um, Knockout Eye Collection and it all goes to charity. That's incredible. Yeah. That's really good. Can I just say, I was filming with Trini Woodrow last week, who's a really good friend of yours. Yeah. And she just said to me, because I was talking to her, I was saying, yeah, there's something about you reminds me of Elizabeth. She said, you know the annoying thing about Elizabeth? She's the most low maintenance woman I know. She really is. How does she look like that? How does she look like that? I said, well, she's your friend. You ask me. Obviously, now we know what Advanced Night Repair. Yes. Any well, other? That definitely helps. Yeah, I'm going to ask one last, really. I'm going, to ask, I'm going to ask two questions, but I'm going to ask one last question. Any other beauty secrets you want to pass on? Because, let's be honest here, you do look stonkingly good, Elizabeth Hurley. <laughs> well, you're very, very kind. I think I've been spoiled because as I've been with the Estee companies for 22 years, I have had as indeed of you, because you've been mm -hmm. in the beauty industry. True. I've had great product at my fingertips for 22 years, and I've used it. I've used a lot of it. I try everything new that comes out in any of our brands, even though I do stick to some old favorites, like Advanced Night Repair. But Annie, I will say there's three things that um, we need to concentrate on. We've got it. Health, skin, and our emotional state. We have to be happy, you know? We all get terrible knocks in life sometimes, we all go through trauma sometimes, but it's how you come out the other side of it that really matters. And when I see a woman who looks fabulous at any age, it's because they're glowing from the inside. I hope they've looked after their skin and their health, but also it's because they're happy. They've looked for the positive and they've found something to get out of the traumatic times. And I know a lot of people who've been through a lot mm -hmm. and they can still, they have bright eyes and they're still full of life. And that's one of our challenges and it's an important one. What makes you happy then? My family and my friends and I without love sounding like a goody goody, doing good can yeah, sometimes no. make you feel good. And I love that you share that on Instagram. I think you're really great to follow on Instagram and I love that you that you share your your families, your family, your friends, your joy for life really shines through. And I think that's really lovely. It's important to me and I like people being happy around me. That's the wonderful Elizabeth Hurley. I'm going to put the links to everything below. All of the products you can buy, all of the information and advice because there are incredible websites. But also Elizabeth has just finished making a documentary and we're going to put the link in below. And that's essentially a celebration of 25 years and all of the incredible landmarks and achievements that they have had. Thank you so much. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for following. Any questions, please ask below. I can't guarantee that Elizabeth will jump on my YouTube channel and answer them, but I certainly will. <laughs> Thank you.